name is Annie and welcome back to my channel. I've always been very fascinated by the legend of King Arthur. I chose to study the legend and the literature surrounding it. But before there were all these versions of the myth, all these modern adaptations, the series, the movies, and even before all the medieval texts of Arthur, before the Mort d'Arthur, before Geoffrey of Monmouth, the legend of King Arthur was spread around earlier texts sometimes just by the mention of his name or by the, the description of military deeds. And those early texts, though they don't have the full story as we know it today, were the first to lay down the footwork for this idea of Arthur that would become so important in the culture and literature of the Middle Ages and even today. So today I'm going to talk about a few of these early texts starting in the 9th century and going up to the 11th century right before Geoffrey of Monmouth wrote his History of the Kings of Britain and reintroduce Arthur to a larger audience. So the first text that I'll be talking about is the Historia Britonum, which was written in North Wales in the Kingdom of Gwynedd in around 830 and it is considered one of the earliest, if not the earliest, mention of Arthur in a text. And the authorship of this text is still disputed, as some of the manuscripts have a prologue in which Nennius claims authorship over the text, but it's not present in all, so scholars don't know if this was a later edition or if he really was the author of these texts. The work was likely commissioned by the King Murfin, who wished for a history of the Britons, to show that they were the rightful inhabitants of the land. So in order to do this, the work starts all the way back in the classical period with Brutus coming and settling England. So after the period of the Roman occupation, the Historia talks about King Vortigern, who let the Saxons into the country. The text talks about a great military leader who led the Britons against the Saxons in battles and was victorious many times, and he names that leader as Arthur. The work describes 12 battles in which Arthur led the Britons against the Saxons and was victorious and capable of amazing deeds. These deeds are sometimes too amazing, as in the Battle of Baden Hill, the text claims that he single-handedly killed 960 men. So even though this text is presented as a history, there are already elements of legend seeping into Arthur's character. There's also mention of another battle in which Arthur carried the image of Mary on his shoulders, and that faith led him to victory. However, Arthur is not described as a king in this. He is described as a military leader who was great among the kings. So there's no way of knowing if he was a king in this text or just that military leader. Apart from the very famous list of 12 battles, Arthur also is mentioned twice in the Wonders of Britain part of the book at the very end, and one of these is about the paw print left on a rock by Arthur's dog Cathel while they were hunting the pig Troit. The second mention is about a tomb which is supposedly of Amir, who was Arthur's son that he himself killed. The tomb is said to be magical since every time you go to measure its length, it changes. And the author claims that he went to measure it himself. So the second text that I'll be talking about are the Annales Cambriae, or the Annals of Wales. So this was a chronicle written in South Wales in about the mid 10th century. So 950 is kind of the estimated date for this. It chronicles a period of 533 years of Britain, starting in the year 447. So in this chronicle, two entries mention Arthur, and they give us dates for these battles that he fought. The first one is the Battle of Baden Hill, which we saw in the Historia, and it dates it to 516. In this battle, Arthur is said to have carried the cross of Christ on his shoulders. So it has very similar imagery to what we saw in the Historia, but it's still different enough. The second entry in the Chronicle about Arthur dates to 537, and it is about the Battle of Camlan, in which Arthur and Madrod fell. Interestingly, Madrod, who we know in later medieval literature as Mordred, falls in battle with him, but we don't know if he was fighting by his side or against him. So even though there are just two entries about Arthur in this chronicle, it reinforces the idea that he fought at the Battle of Baden Hill and already starts sprinkling in 
bits of the legend with Madrad falling with him. So apart from the texts that I've already mentioned that have the story of Arthur in them, there are other mentions of his name spread around Welsh literature. And the problem with those texts is that sometimes we can't date them to a specific period. So while they very well could be some of the earliest mentions of Arthur, they could also have been written in the 12th century. So one of these mentions belongs to the Godadin, which is a Welsh poem that could have been written anywhere between the 7th and the 11th century, and maybe later, but scholars think that it's probably around the 10th and 11th century, but it, the opinion on that changes all the time. And in this poem, a warrior is compared to Arthur, saying that he was really brave and really mighty, but he was no Arthur. And if this is really an early text, it could have been one of the first literary mentions of Arthur. Another poem in which Arthur is present, but we also can't pinpoint the exact date, is the famous Cowick and Owen. Again, please forgive my Welsh pronunciation. Cowick. Cowick and Owen. Arthur also appears in Welsh saints' lives, such as Saint Cadoc, but also like the other text, these could have been early or could have been written in the 12th century. And some of these texts also have evidence for later additions to the text. So even if it was written early on, later someone could have written in a line about Arthur. Just as important as talking about where Arthur is mentioned in these early texts, we need to talk about where he's not mentioned because there are two very important texts that do not mention Arthur and those are Gildas and Bede. Gildas could have written anywhere from 490 to 560, and he wrote about his recent memory and recent history. His text is about the fall of Britain, the ruin of Britain because it was just conquered by the Saxons. He says that Britain fell because of the sins of its people, and it was punishment from God. And he talks about the Battle of Baden Hill, in which the Britons were victorious, but he does not say who commanded the troops, and so he does not mention Arthur in a battle where the two other chronicles say that he should have been at. While his omission of Arthur could have been because he didn't want to praise the Britons too much, because that would go against the thesis of his text, it could also have been because Arthur simply was not at that battle, and because he didn't exist. The absence of Arthur and Gildas has generated a lot of scholarly conversation about the historical Arthur. So the second text from which Arthur is missing is Bede's Ecclesiastical History of the English People, which was written in around 730. He talks about the English people this time, so the Britons are not portrayed in the most favorable light. Again, Arthur is not mentioned, and that could have been because his great victories for the Britons would not fit with the argument of Bede's texts, but it also could have been because Arthur was not there and a historical Arthur did not exist. So though the text that I talk about here might seem like just little mentions of Arthur and just small accounts of him and not have anything to do with the legend as we know it today, they were very important in laying down those first mentions of him and marking his name down in literature and history. One thing that I find really interesting about these texts is that they merge history and literature and legend and you can't really tell where the barriers are. So though we don't have any more texts with these set dates, it seems likely that Arthur was already a figure of legend in the 9th century and in the 10th century, and it is likely that he was perhaps part of this oral tradition, and that the figure of Arthur was known even before it became very popular in the 12th century. So if you're interested in hearing more about how the legend of Arthur evolved through the centuries, through literature, I will be doing a series on this, and the next time I will be talking about the explosion of Arthurian literature in the 12th century, starting with Geoffrey of Monmouth. So thank you so much for watching this video. I hope that you enjoyed it and that you learned a little bit more about the origins of the Arthurian legend, and I will see you next time.